everyone, this is Matt Perez, and today I want to kick off a new video series talking about animations. Now, we've done a few videos in the past on animation where we've looked at uh, maybe a single object, we use the wizard to rotate it around, or you know, maybe we've looked at exploded views, but if you have ever come across this or you've ever dealt with a complex assembly that really has a lot of degrees of freedom, for instance, like the robot on the screen, then you know how much of a headache it can be. So I want to give you guys some tips and tricks to kind of show you how you can handle these animations, these complicated animations, a little bit easier. Now there are several ways to do it. You can create mates, and I've done that here, and I'll show you guys a little bit of that as well. You can create mates, and you can turn them on and off, but the problem you run into is that your model just goes from one position to the other. It snaps into that geometry. Just like if you had two pieces you know, floating around in your assembly, you add a mate, it just kind of snaps together. It doesn't float over how it should. So what I want to show you guys is a way that you can a little bit more easily control the motion. So the robot on the screen has a lot of degrees of freedom still. I've locked a few things, but I've really taken care of a lot of that motion. So I want to go over some of the mates that we have some of the mates that I put in place to kind of show you how things can move around and so on. And then we'll talk about the best way to get that smooth gradual motion and kind of plan your parts out. All right, so the jaws on this piece actually can open and close a decent amount. So initially I made a limit mate and that gave me a good range to get an open and a closed amount. Uh, so then I went ahead and I made a jaws open and a jaws closed mate. So you can see that if I suppress and unsuppress these, it'll actually open and close the jaws. So this way, in an animation, it gives me a good, basically an on-off button to allow those jaws to open and close. If I just use the limit mate, if there's no really driving feature in there controlling its distance, when you move this thing around, it's gonna open and close and so on. There is a concentric mate, and there's a coincident mate with the piece that we wanna pick up. Now, this is to go ahead and show you in an animation how it'll just snap to that location and we'll handle that in a later video. Then I did a few other ones to give my links a little bit of an angle limit. So if we go into one of these, for instance, let's go into this mid-link angle limit, you can see that I have a max angle of 130 and a minimum angle of 30. So if I punch these numbers in, you'll be able to see the model move and it says this mate cannot be solved, but really it can. Let's punch in 120 and we'll see the difference here. Uh, you really have to be careful not to over define your models. Uh, for instance, this 30 degree, if we go down to 20 and instead of 130, we go up to 150. It gives us quite a wide range here. So if we move the head of this robot around, you can see that it's giving us a, a little bit farther range. So here we've got that wide angle, that 150. And as we go back, we're getting into that 20 degree angle between it. So that gives you a good idea of the range. Now, you can see here, and this happens a lot when you're dealing with SOLIDWORKS assemblies, and they've been trying to fix it, and it's getting better, but it's not always the greatest. Is it can snap to different locations and cause you guys some problems. Now, whenever you run into this, one of the things that you might end up doing is taking one of the components, fixing them, and then that'll help you manually move things around a little bit. And it's kind of frustrating, but it's something that we have to do from time to time if you have a more complicated assembly. Now, SOLIDWORKS is really great on handling basic motion, the mechanical mates, and some of the advanced mates, but whenever you have a lot of degrees of freedom of your components, that's where you really run into trouble. So if we take a look at the end link angle mate, I also have some values on there. We've got a minimum of 20 and a maximum of 90, and you can see now that it's at the 20 degree limit that it's actually starting to lock. So let's kick that up to 40 and see how things rotate. Now you can see it's over defining the assembly. So this is where you start to run into these problems when uh, these components start to get locked in place. And if you were just dealing with uh, motion assembly, then you can run into that all the time. And it's not so easy. You know, people say, oh, why don't you just drag this down and pick it up and move it around? Well, it's not that easy to make the motion look right. And you guys have probably run into that before and understand that. All right, let's look at a couple more mates and then we'll get into creating some of the animation stuff that we need. So you can see here, there's a concentric mate in here that I threw in between these two components that I want to line up. There's some mates between a top plane to locate this, and then there's an offset, two inch offset, so we can actually snap it up here two inches in space. There's an initial position with a sketch that I created, and that gets me away from having to fix this in place. The mates are much easier to suppress and unsuppress in an animation, where if you fix this in place, it can get a little messy. 
especially when trying to rotate things into place. And then I just have some parallel mates in here. Now the parallel one keeps the jaws parallel to the top plane, and then this other one here keeps the mid body parallel. Now these are obviously things that would happen with motor controller. The motors and the gearing inside here would control how a lot of these angles are, are controlled. And, and these gears do move, everything does move in this assembly, but to keep it lightweight, there are no motors, and obviously there's no control circuit or anything controlling the distance one motor turns on the other. And these are things that would happen in reality. So let's dive right in to how I would control the motion of this part. Well, like I mentioned in the beginning, there are several different ways that you can approach this. I mean, you can do mates, you can turn them on and off, and then it can snap into location. You can manually drag this thing around, get it close, and then snap the mates. But what we're really looking for is that smooth motion. We, we don't want this thing to flip around and jump around. So we really want to create a nice smooth motion, and we want to grab this piece, and then we want to drag it over here. So what I like to do is create a 3D sketch. So I'm going to start a sketch. I'm going to start a 3D sketch. And I'm going to use a spline. And my spline is going to start from this point. And I'm actually going to snap it here. And then I'm going to just drag it around over here in space. Now, I'm just going to plop it over here for now and hit the escape key. I want to draw a straight line. That's for construction. That's centered right here. And I'm just going to draw it vertically. And the reason I'm doing that is this gives me a good way to make sure that this guy is tall enough above here, and then I can create a relation to merge those two together. So if we look at this thing from the side, you can see that the motion's coming down here, and it's actually dropping down and then going back up. Now we have to be careful here because we don't want to pick this thing up and then try to push it through the floor, so we never want this guy to go below that point. Because we have a spline point there, we can actually drag this around, and we can add some relations here. So you can see we want to keep it in line with this face, but we don't have that option. So what we do have is if we grab this handle, we can say a long Z. Now that a long Z will keep us from dipping down that low. But you'll notice that then it kind of comes up and makes a sweeping motion. And that's really okay. We're not too worried about exactly controlling it, but you can do this and make this a long X as well. So you can see there, we've created a spline, and if we look at it from the top, it's a nice, smooth, arcing spline. We need to make sure that this is tall enough so it doesn't hit any of our components. But we can go ahead and start with this and take a look at what this will do for us. All right, so you might be wondering, how can we actually restrain this? And if we move this thing around and we update, is it actually going to move my spline? And you can see that it is because it's snapping to that point. So I need to go back into my 3D sketch and I need to make sure that I didn't add any relations that I didn't mean to because what's going to happen is if right now we go in and we try to apply a path mate to this 3D sketch, as soon as we move this head, it's going to move around. So what I want to do is remove that coincident relation and I just want to take this endpoint. I'm going to fix it in space. That way I know where it's located. So now if I move the head around, and rebuild this, it's not gonna snap to that geometry anymore. So now I wanna control this motion and I'm gonna go to my assembly, go to my mate tab, I'm gonna go to my advanced mates and we're gonna do a path mate. And the path mate's gonna be from this point that's located on my part here, the center point, and then my path is gonna be the spline. Now it says this mate can't be solved but I'm just gonna go ahead and hit okay and we're gonna take a look at the mate in the model. So if I rotate this around, you'll notice it snaps to that point. Now the reason it couldn't be solved is because that head was out there in space. But now you can see that we move it around, all the rest of our joints are moving slowly, and because we plan this out well, the jaws are actually just missing that part. So you can see if we rotate it back a little bit, let me zoom out here. If we rotate it back a little bit, you can see as we come in, the jaws are just barely missing and they might just be barely nicking them and that's something that we can rotate in the animation assembly we're going to be able to grab it and pick it up there and we'll keep those two together and then it's going to drag on all the way over to the point we need to drop it so you can see that whole time all the rest of this part of the robot here is all moving and it's a nice fluid motion it's not too jerky as if you were trying to manually drag this thing around so because we did this with a spline and because there's really no additional tangency, just as a quick note, if you did this on a plane, if you did a single flat plane, 
then especially if you used an arc or part of a circle then you could just keep dragging this out in space and it would carry on with that tangency. So the fact that we use the spline in 3D allows us to create a start and an end point as well as that fluid motion. All right, so this is where I'm going to end this video. We're going to pick up in the next one by hopping into creating an animation and looking at how we can turn those key points on and off for the constraints, the mates that we made and actually linking and grabbing and bringing these pieces together. So as always, if you guys have any questions, please email SolidWorks support at mlc-cad.com, and we'll see you next time.